try that again. Thank you, Mary. Uh, and thank you all for joining us uh, for Pirates Path Career Lessons Learned. Uh, I'm your host, Scott Francis, the president of the ECU Alumni Association, and we're so glad that you've joined us today. Wherever and however you are with us, thanks for making us a part of your day. I hope uh, everyone is staying safe and healthy and sane and well. Uh, the Pirates Path program is a series of conversations with cool pirates with cool jobs and interesting career stories and paths to where they are today. Part of the nature and the joy that we derive from alumni work is giving pirates out there the opportunity to reflect on their student days and their journey to where they are now. So while we're capturing that here, there's also the opportunity for recent grads and current students to learn from those journeys and stories. Pirates Path seeks to bring you all alumni with very impressive backgrounds and experience, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with Pirates Nationwide. Our hope is that uh, hearing these great stories, you'll glean some interesting strategies or tales of overcoming adversity that you can apply to your journey as well. We're happy to be able to bring you Mr. Alan Smith, class of 03 today. As we get started, I wanted to share some quick ground rules and format info with you. First things first, we are recording this session so that our friends who couldn't be here can access it later. So please note that it will record both our screens and the chats. We've also muted your lines uh, as we meet Alan and for the optimal viewing experience, you should select speaker view, which can be found in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Also, we ask that you keep those lines muted for the duration of the program. We'll get started by asking and chatting with our, our guest and asking some questions, but at any time, you can ask a question in the chat by clicking on the word bubble label chat in the user menu at the bottom of your screen. I am uh, thankful in advance for your patience and understanding as we navigate the ins and outs of the technology. Uh, I got an email first thing this morning that there is some level of server down on campus. Uh, we are working remotely, so I'm, I'm hoping we maintain that and we'll be able to get through this. But in advance, uh, thanks for your patience. Uh, and one more thing before we kick off here, there is a poll appearing on your screen. Uh, we quickly wanted to check in and see if uh, our attendees have updated their confo contact info with us. Uh, if you're on our ECU Connect platform and about uh, any other events you might be interested in. That poll is coming and we'll give you a little time to answer those questions before we dive in. All right. Now it is my great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker on Pirates Program. We are joined today by a great pirate and even better friend, Mr. Alan Smith. After graduating from East Carolina University with a BS in political science, Alan was appointed to serve as town clerk for the town of Bethel, North Carolina. Alan currently serves as the president and CEO of Spartanburg Area Chamber of Commerce, now known as One Spartanburg Inc. This is the only organization in South Carolina in which the business, economic, and tourism development functions coexist under one umbrella. Alan credits the support of his personal and professional mentors for reaching many unimagined professional heights in his career. Alan, thanks for joining us here on uh, Pirates Path with ECU alumni. How are you? I'm great, Scott, and thank you so much for having me. Mary, uh, Scott gets to do all the talking, but Mary really set it up, so I want to thank her for having me as well. That is uh, the story of the Alumni Association. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> bunch, of, uh, bunch of people working hard and I get to smile. <laughs> right. I, uh, I suppose given the situation globally, and uh, we all watch the news, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, uh, how are you? And what's, what's, been li what's life been like for you since around March 15th or so? Well, uh, we're in day 183 from working from home. Uh, we entered into a phased uh, process of returning to the office a few weeks ago. So uh, we have 22 staff, um, seven of which uh, are in the office at one time. And then the, of course the other 15 are, are working from home. And so um, that's kind of been our recent change, our, our recent transition, uh, just like everybody else. Uh, the world changed in March. We've been incredibly blessed in Spartanburg because our economy has weathered this really well. And, and, and 
this group didn't log on to hear all kinds of economic data points, but suffice it to say, uh, we're still going to have a very good year in terms of new investment, new job creation. Uh, of course, we've lost some small businesses, but on the whole, on the macro level, uh, this community is performing incredibly well. Um, we're poised to do about $360, $370 million in investment this year, which basically means new, comp new companies, new businesses, new industries coming to Spartanburg County. Um, so that's good. Um, that's, that's, that's good considering. Um, and really that's, that's leading South Carolina um, in the top echelon of counties in South Carolina in 2020. So been very blessed. We know a lot of communities have had a hard go on it. In terms of cases in Spartanburg County, yesterday our number of cases was 10% of the state's total. So we are, we're still piking, peaking, we're still surging uh, as it relates to cases. So uh, as part of our bringing back the Burr Business Recovery Task Force, we're encouraging people, if you want to see the business community return, you got to do the things that everybody's telling us to do, social distance, mask, be smart, wash your hands, practice common sense. So, uh, so far so good. I have a three-year-old and I have a one-year-old, uh, both girls. So working from home for me is not going to happen. Uh, I come to the office every single day and have from the very beginning. Um, I tried it uh, one day and I guess it was probably 10.30 in the morning. I was on a Zoom call and my three-year-old came through the door like the SWAT team. And so I knew then that I was gonna to need to come to the office every day. And so I've been here uh, every day since. I can tell you who has the best snacks in their desk drawers, who has the best candy. Um, because when you're here by yourself, at least I was probably for four or five months, uh, you get a little desperate. So thank you for asking, but, but, but all good and all healthy. Awesome. And uh, oops, well, we've, we've talked about you're in Spartanburg now, and we'll get back to how you how you got there. Uh, but first, want to kind of check in on your origin story. So, live and working in the greater Spartanburg, South Carolina area. Uh, but if I remember this right, you are one of the purplest of pirates and hail from right here in Greenville. Do I have that right? I do, and I see I see Rebecca from my high school. So I can't get too creative about any of my stories. So I need to. I guess I need to have some semblance of the truth uh, when I talk about um, high school and hometown. But yeah, I am I am proud to be from Greenville, North Carolina. In fact, uh, our neighbor to the south here in Spartanburg is Greenville, South Carolina, and it just just completely runs all over them when someone says I'm from Greenville, and I say, "Oh, North Carolina." Um, so. Anyway, um, proud to be from Greenville. What high school did you graduate from? D.H. Conley. D.H. Conley, okay. Spent, spent a year, actually graduated, graduated from South Caldwell High School right outside of Hickory, spent about a year away from Greenville. Um, it was actually my senior year in high school or so, and then came right back to East Carolina. Okay. So growing up, I knew maybe a handful of, of kids who grew up knowing exactly what they wanted to do with their lives. Was that you? Do you remember growing up kind of knowing what you wanted to be? Well, I've never met anybody my entire life that says they want to be a chamber president when they're like 12 years old. I mean, no, you just, you're not pushing the Tonka truck around the yard saying, I can't wait to be a chamber president. And I think that's I think that's the case with 99.9% with .9 of the people in this industry. Um, for me, and it's so much a part of my experience at East Carolina, um, uh, statistically, I really wasn't even supposed to go to college. Uh, I'm the son of a, a teen mom. Um, she uh, and my dad were together for eight years until they got divorced. And then um, I was the son of a single mom with three boys. Um, and, and no one in my family had gone to college. So, of course, and, and let me say, too, the, the three boys were perfect angels, so I don't want to paint uh, too rough of a picture for my mom. But, um, you know, statistically, uh, college probably should not have been in the cards for me. So I feel blessed every single day that I had the opportunity to go to East Carolina. I'll never forget 
when I found out that I had been admitted, my grandma and my mom came to the grocery store that I was working in with that, that big envelope that had ECU on it. And I was thinking when they walked up, this is either going to be really good or really bad. Uh, we're all going to celebrate right here on in, in aisle six in front of the bread, or I'm going to open it up and it's going to just be a major letdown. And, and thank God um, that it was, you know, you had been admitted. Um, and so when I got to East Carolina, I really, really struggled. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say at the end of my first semester, I had a 0 0.6 uh, GPA. Uh, spent spent way more time outside the classroom than in the classroom. Um, priorities, you know, just weren't where they needed to be. I didn't really have anybody in my family to help me navigate the system because college is a big bureaucratic system. I mean, somebody's in your face talking about a FAFSA. What's a FAFSA? And financial aid. And I'd never even heard heard of a si syllabus before I started at East Carolina. So you know, you're, you're navigating all that, um, you know, you are going to college in your hometown, which for me was like high school with no parental oversight. And it was amazing. Um, loved it, had so much fun. Um, but I had um, the Dean, I guess, I don't know what his title was, Dean of Students. His name was Don Joyner. And I'll never forget it. Uh, he actually has since moved from East Carolina and went to Pitt Community, and I'm not sure if he's still there or not, but but uh, I guess Dr. or Mr. Joyner called me in his office, and he was a bear. I mean, he took had my GPA, all my classes right in front of him, and he said, are you kidding me? Like, this is ridiculous, and he didn't sugarcoat it at all. I mean, I'd never even had really an adult use some of the words that he used to me and it shook me. I mean, it rattled me. It really centered me and it made a difference. And I'll tell you who else made a difference. Dr. Thomas Amon, E-A-M-O-N in the political science department. You know, I was taking all these classes, you know, and this is, I think this is the case with everyone. You take the prerequisites and you're sitting there going philosophy, like what? I am never going to use this. Why am I having to sit here? I'm just not going to go to class this Friday or, or whatever else. And I think what happens to all of us is we take that one class or maybe it's two classes or we have that one professor that lights something in us. And for me, it was, it was Dr. Amon. Um, it was basically an intro to poli sci class. And this guy was unbelievable. He could stand on a chair and recite what the governor of North Carolina said in his inaugural address in 1924 with no notes. And I, I just was blown away. Um, there I was sitting in my hometown and I could have been a thousand miles away with what was being, what I was being exposed to. I didn't even feel like I was in my hometown anymore. And so <clears throat> he really got me interested in political science and, and Carmine Scavo at the political science department, just great people, Spalding, Brian Smith, um, Simon, Dr. Simon, Barry Simon, all of them. And, and that's where I started thinking about, you know, I want a purposeful job. I mean, anybody can go out and, and sling a product and, and make some money, but I want to make some money, but have a purpose too. And so I got interested in, in local government. So Long story short, I got my stuff together. Um, I met my wife, Jenny, and she was a typical, never made a B her entire life. She was at Meredith College. And she kind of laid it out too. Like basically, you know, if, if our relationship is gonna progress, you're not gonna fail college because I'm not going to be with someone in the long term that's a, a college flunky. And so you know, instead of going downtown, we would go to get a cup of coffee and go sit at Joiner Library for two or three hours and study and do all the right things. And so I have to give her a ton of credit too. I would not have graduated had it not been for her. So um, 
I was fortunate enough to, to graduate. I turned Scott, I turned that, that 0 0.6 around, uh, took a lot of, lot of work, um, and was just very fortunate at the age of 23 years old to be appointed a town clerk for the town of Bethel right here in Pitt County. I will always, always remember Bethel and how they took a chance on this kid, 23 years old. And that was really my first foray into to local government. When you're in a small town like that, 1,500 people, it, you're exposed to everything. I mean, the public works department, the, the volunteer fire department, police, payroll, every, every aspect of, of local government, good, bad, and ugly. And enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. And then had an opportunity to, um, I saw an opportunity to come back and, and, and take a leadership position with the Greenville Pitt County Chamber of Commerce right there in Greenville. And uh, I was way underqualified. I didn't think I stood a snowball's chance in getting that job. And that's the kind of job you should always apply for. You should never apply for a job where you say, oh, this would be, I should get this easy. You know, this is a lateral move or whatever. And so long story short, got that job, was continued to be elevated in that position. And then was fortunate enough to be hired as present CEO of the Greer South Carolina Chamber of Commerce. Greer is the second fastest growing city in South Carolina, right in between Greenville and Spartanburg. Was there four or five years and then made my way to Spartanburg, which is the only consolidated business economic tourism and development organization in South Carolina. Uh, we're a county of 330,000 people, home to seven colleges, home to BMW plant Spartanburg, where they produce 1,400 BMWs every day. So literally a BMW X series rolls off the line every single minute at BMW plant Spartanburg. So very blessed to be here. That's that's the whole track right there. Excellent. And uh, let me back you up because I, I've, it wasn't the Dean of Students that did it for me. I, I had a rough uh, first go of it. Not, not quite <laughs> 0.67 rough. That's a great ERA. But <laughs> I had yeah. a rough, yeah. rough go of it at first. And uh, my kind of moment was... Uh, there were a bunch of guys that I hung out with that were all fraternity brothers. Their fraternity chapter was suspended and coming back on campus. And I was interested in being part of that new class that relaunched them and uh, came from a meeting one night and he pulled me aside after it and just could, gave me the business about uh, you're a nice guy. I enjoy hanging out with you. If I had to put a bid today for you to restart this chapter and do it the right way, you wouldn't get the bid. Uh, because of X, Y, like totally hit me with some truth bombs. And so that was, that was my moment of, oh, okay. <laughs> I need to turn this around. This is what other people are seeing in me. Nice guy wouldn't want him to be involved in anything like serious that I'm doing. Uh, and so yeah. for me, pivoting and, and kind of making those changes, yes, my brain wanted to do it, but I had to actually find the discipline. So well, you mentioned your, your now wife as, as part of that like new structure. Were there other things you did structurally to kind of get your nose onto that grindstone and keep it there? Time management's everything and it's still everything. I mean, it's the only thing we can't buy. Um, you can literally watch it fleeting. Um, and so you just got to manage your time and you got to prioritize. And everybody says that and it's kind of the cliche thing to do, but sitting there on Facebook, you eat up 22 minutes like that and you never know it. Um, little things like that add up. And, and I, I mean, I use social media as, a, as an example, but we can all think of ways in which we mismanage our time. Um, you know, and part of, as you, as you mentioned, you know, your peer group, you mismanage your time when you're hanging out with people that aren't bringing you up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I want to hit one last thing about your student days. Uh, Saturdays in the fall, what was your, did you have a routine? Did you have a typical home game, game day routine? And being from Greenville, that might be totally different than, than somebody else. Well, you know, so, so, so growing up, we didn't necessarily 
you know, have the means to go to every single game. I would have the opportunity from time to time to be able to go with a friend. Um, and when my mom remarried, you know, I was able to go to, to more games. Um, and so for me, it's the game is not complete without bees barbecue. I just, I am obsessed with it. Uh, every time I go back home, I go to bees barbecue sometimes twice. Um, just absolutely love it. I got a big kick out of their COVID protocols last time I was there. That was an interesting approach. Um, so yeah, and then I'm I'm always the I'm the I'm the purest when it comes to East Carolina football. Don't don't come in halfway through the first quarter. You know, don't leave. I I think that we we have the greatest national anthem rendition i love at the very end where it gets real quiet and you can tell you're taking somebody to the game for the first time and not expecting that cannon and i like to see them get scared out of their mind as soon as the cannon goes i don't miss that i don't miss purple haze i mean i'm there 30 minutes before the kick because i just love the pageantry and uh you know, I, I try to watch warm ups as if I'm like Curb Herp, Curb Herp Street, and I'm I'm saying, oh, Morgan Ehlers, you know, looking. I don't know how he's going to play today, and I have no idea. But I'm just that's kind of kind of my routine. You know, a lot of a lot of my friends or whatever they they come into the game, you know, on two wheels, last wait to the last second and arrive like two. They may have missed the first two drives in the first quarter. I don't do all that, and I stay. We can be down. We can be down by 40 points. I'm going to watch him raise the, the no quarter flag in the fourth quarter. I'm not leaving, um, especially now, you know, living five and a half hours away. If I make it to a game, I'm, I'm staying for every single second of it. I hear you. And a pivotal, pivotal moment in my uh, girlfriend at the time, now wife of over 10 years, was uh, at a different place, but uh, we were packing up the tailgate five minutes before kickoff, and we're right outside the stadium packing up, and she showed up with her friends uh, to the tailgate and just looking at us all like we're crazy, going, where's everybody going? And I said, kickoff's in like five minutes. She was like, oh, you go for that? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. you don't? <laughs> yeah. She said, oh, I usually kind of saunter and make sure I get there for the beginning of the fourth quarter, and then we kind of leave shortly after that and like for a brief moment I was like I don't know if this is going to work out <laughs> I get it I get it yeah. you know, I'll also like to since I'm not able to make every game now I like to 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 mute ESPN and listen to Jeff Charles call the game which is kind of odd because sometimes you know with internet tv he might be way ahead of where they are and and sometimes they might be behind of where he is. So it's kind of difficult to follow, but I mean, you gotta love Jeff Charles and how excited he gets um, when you hear him call a game. It's the best. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, can't, can't beat that last game of the year, but I, I used to have a stand all game, never leave early policy uh, that at some point the stand all game thing, I reached a certain certain mileage on the knees uh, that kind of stopped that. And then I reached a uh, upgrade of seats that no longer allowed, uh, the people around me no longer allowed that. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I get that. So I'll, I'll sit, but I stand when appropriate now. Um, but it, yeah, it's, I, I always find it interesting people's traditions and kind of how they, how they digest uh, their football differently. And so I appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, you talked about Bethel, uh, bit, that clerk position in Bethel being your first, first uh, full-time gig. So how did that come about? Did you, you know, I usually ask at spring break of your senior year when people ask, so what are you doing uh, next year? Was that, was that a, a fun question or were you still kind of up in the air at that point? So I was, I did four and a half years. So I actually graduated in December and then May is when I started in Bethel. So come December, I had no idea. I mean, I had the typical college job. I worked at a law, a law firm as an intern. And, and let me say too, to those that are listening, um, sometimes the greatest internships or the, the greatest jobs you can have in college are the ones that tell you what you don't want to do. Um, 
And, you know, I, I have been very grateful for the experience at the law firm, but it, it really told me I do not want to do this because typically the track is political science, law school attorney. And, you know, I just, so, so anyway, it was December. I didn't have any, I didn't have any opportunities. Of course, I was applying for things left and right. And on um, the Bethel opportunity came up, I applied and it, you talk about our first real interview, you interview in front of the mayor and the town commission. I mean, so it was, uh, six, seven, um, no, five, five town council people and the mayor. I mean, and they were up there on the platform and I was in a steel chair sitting down below them looking up. And that's how the, that's kind of how the interview went. Um, so I haven't had a harder one since then. Um, but yeah, that's how that all came about. You're ready to interview to be a Supreme Court justice. That's right, right, right. Same, same kind of setup. <clears throat> okay, so you did. Beth how long did you do the uh, the role in Be uh, Bethel? I was there two years. Two, two years. years. <clears throat> and then somebody lured you back to uh, back to Greenville, Pitt County. Yeah, well, Bethel's in Pitt County, so it's just it's 14 miles up the road from Greenville. So I never left. I mean, I never really left Pitt County. Um, but yeah, I, I saw, actually saw an opportunity, um, at the Greenville Pitt County Chamber of Commerce. And, um, I think, I think the role was director of operations. And so, like I said before, on paper, I looked at it and said, oh boy, I, you know, I don't think I'm qualified for this, but I, I shot it out there and, um, had an opportunity to interview at that time, she was Suzanne Sartell. Now she's Suzanne Sartell Pretty. Um, talk about somebody that had an impact on my life as well. We can talk about that. But um, interview with her, um, and um, it was great. I, I worked there, uh, let's see, five years, and then had the opportunity. I, I got a call from Greer and um, was not open-minded at all. I mean, I just, I was in my hometown um, I, all my family's in Eastern North Carolina. Um, I had no, no desire whatsoever to leave and especially go to South Carolina because in North Carolina, we, we kind of think we're a little bit more distinguished than South Carolinians. Right. Um, and so I was like, yeah, South Carolina, I'm good. And long story short, uh, a great friend of mine, one of my best friends, Tony Cannon, he's actually the CEO of Greenville Utilities. Uh, he came to Greenville Utilities from Greer and they reached out to him and said, we're trying to get this guy to apply for our job. He doesn't seem to be interested. And do you know him? And Tony said, yeah, I know him quite well. And so it also speaks to the fact that there's things happen for a reason. There's a bigger plan out there than, than any of us will ever understand, but it is at work. Um, and so Tony told me, um, he said, and this is great, great advice too. He said, he said, what do you think are the two most important things in terms of advancing your career? And I said, well, I guess, you know, maybe a, maybe a good solid interview and a good solid resume. He said, exactly. And how often do you freshen up either? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, wow, you know, I guess only when you really have to. And he said, yes. So why don't you just freshen up your resume Freshen up your interview skills and consider it, you know, a, a development experience. Go down there and meet those people and just do it for the experience. You'll be better. And then he ended with, if they know you like I do, you're not going to get the job anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, that's a good friend, right? <laughs> so um, I went down there and, and uh, you know, it just completely blew my mind as to as to what was happening there and the growth trajectory in that community and you know, one thing led to another and I ended up getting the role there. And how long have you been in, in that role? Well, in Greer, I was in Greer for four years, about four and a half years. Okay. And I've been in Spartanburg now for six. Six, okay, okay. So here's the, the question we, I think we asked this at uh, some of our early uh, Pirates Path sessions, and uh, we kind of reflected on it and said, oh, that puts people in a weird place to ask them what they want to do 10 years from now. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but if you talk a little bit about uh, career development advancement, where what would you like to be uh, doing? How do you see your prog career progressing in, in the next five to 10 years, assuming we can come out of the house at some point in there? It's a great, I mean, it's a great question. Um, I'm in a different season now. I will tell you that, and that, wow, that makes me sound like I'm 80. Uh, but, you know, I think when you're in your, your 20s and maybe even your 30s, and I'm, I'm still in my 30s, let's be clear. Um, I think you're just, at least me, I was doing everything I could to get up the ladder as quick as I could. I mean, every move was, was made with the next move in mind and the next move in mind and the next move in mind. Um, now I'm, I'm more of the mindset of, you know, I'm going to do the absolute best job I can do all day, every day here. And if other opportunities come around, then great. But I'm not at a point for the first time in my career, and I think it, that illustrates how happy we are here. I'm not out actively seeking and I'm not actively out there positioning either. Um, with our model and the scope that it presents, I have more than enough on my plate. I have many, many challenges, um, but so many opportunities too. Um, so, you know, and I, I, I think one of the questions was quotes. And one of my favorite quotes is, if you don't do more than what you're paid to do, you'll never be paid more for what you do. And so, you know, they've taken great care of me here because, I mean, I try to try to go with that mantra every day. So where will I be in five and 10 years? You know, I hope I'm the best husband. I'm the most, best dad ever. Um, quite honestly, that's best priority. Um, but I hope, I hope that my board still has me here and we're, we're killing it. Excellent. Excellent. And that wasn't a political answer. I mean, that's, that's truly uh, legit. Um, last summer, um, I really had a, an incredible, both professional and emotional pool type opportunity. And um, it really illustrated with my wife and me how much we like it here because we passed on it. Excellent. And I, I do, this is how I knew I was getting old. I was having a conversation with a former staff member a few years ago and they asked me what my dream job was. And I said, oh, that's easy, center fielder for the New York Yankees. Uh, and I grew up, I was a shortstop and the Yankees had some guy at shortstop who's the exact same age as me. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, there was no room for me to move up because of him. <laughs> uh, but I said, right. yeah, I, my dream job is to be with the New York Yankees. And she looked at me and she said, oh, like in the front office, right? And I was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> I've reached yeah. the point where actually having a glove on just isn't even <laughs> in the mm -hmm. car. <laughs> well, humble pie. Yes, yes. Uh, so typically my answer to what's my dream job is I don't dream about work a whole lot. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, so it, again, if folks have questions, please put them in the chat. Um, We'll start to wind down here with your time with us, but uh, can you tell us any parts of your path thus far that were harder than you expected? And that could be a specific class, an exam, a part of your any of your jobs. Um, you know, I, I will say I already talked about my, my challenges at East Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, I think challenges in my role now are, you know, Steve Jobs has, has said, you know, if you, if you want everyone to like you, don't be a leader, sell ice cream. Um, I think there's a lot of truth in that. I think there's truth in, um, there's a lady here uh, who's CEO of our mobile, mobile mills Spartanburg organization, just very wise lady. And she always says, even Jesus had detractors. And so, you know, if you're going to be in a leadership position and you're going to make moves uh, and you're going to move whatever organization it is that you're leading forward, you are going to have some people that are going to be 
um, questioning you. They're going to be doubting you. They're going to say this is the wrong direction or your priorities aren't in order and so on and so forth. Um, but you got to you got to be convicted and you got to press forward. And, and I'm not saying be unreasonable um, because we all have different dynamics that we have to manage. But, you know, that's one of the things I, I still struggle with today. It, it's kind of like, you know, somebody in the paper will say something negative about what we're doing or, you know, social media comments or, you know, you'll meet a high level investor that'll, that'll really, you know, maybe say, yeah, you know, I don't think you're going in the right direction, but, but again, you gotta, you gotta stay the course. Um, you can't, you can't just let a few people, you know, uh, another quote, you know, Winston Churchill said that you'll never get to where you're going if you stop and listen to every dog that barks. Um, and that's a hard, with my personality, it's a hard thing to do because I'm a, I'm an extroverted people pleaser and you, you, you can't, I, I work against that, you know, all day, every day, because you can't please everybody, even internally here. I mean, we have the best, we have the best culture we've ever had, in my opinion. We have the best team we've ever had, but, you know, with 22 people, some people are not going to like different policies that come from the top. I mean, I'm sure that never happens at the Alumni Association, but, um, you know, it, it is what it is. And I think if, you, if you're good to people, even though they might not respect what you're doing, they'll say, you know what? I know that he has the organization's best interest in mind um, and he's going to make the right call, even though I might not agree with it. And that's, it's, it's a daily, it's a daily struggle. You know, another thing too, and I, one of the questions was radical was, was what book do you like? I have not finished it yet, but I'm reading radical candor and that is a tough book too, especially as a Southerner, because we don't do candor. I mean, we we say sugar, bless your heart, and then when you walk out of the room, we just trash you, um, or we just dance around dance around it because you know we want to be polite, we want to be genteel, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But you know that's a struggle as well for me to give direct, honest, open uh, feedback. Excellent. You'll love it's. Uh, I read that about a year, maybe a year and a half ago. It's a good one. It is a good one. Uh, anything you wish you knew when you were starting out and in, in your path? Listen to older people. Really, I mean, listen to older people and heed their advice. Uh, I was blessed, you know, because because my mom had me when she was a teenager. Um, all my grandparents are still alive. Um, I lost my last great grandparent in my late twenties. So I knew all my great grandparents. Uh, I even have a picture of me when I was probably four or five years old with my great, great grandparents. So I've always been surrounded by older people, but that didn't change the fact. I mean, when all of us are young, we're just like, these people, they don't know what they're talking about, you know, like, and the older I get, the more, uh, number one, I sound like older people. Um, some of the younger people in the office will say I dress like the older people. Uh, I use technology like the older people. Um, but there's, there's a lot of truth in so many of the things they said because they've been through them. I mean, they've been where you are. It's not like you're going through life for the first time of any human being ever. I mean, there really isn't an experience that someone else hadn't already had, and, and you'd be crazy just to dismiss it. Um, and so I've always tried to just listen to older people and, and heed their advice, um, because again, they, they've been there, and, and a lot of times you haven't. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, nothing brings, that idea out more than uh, my eight-year-old son. It's usually him. My daughter's got her stuff, but it's usually my son that does something and I something clicks in my brain like, I did this exact thing at his age or around his age, and it must have driven my mother up the wall because it's driving me up the wall. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that, that is the gift that he's given back, and I'm sure she just chuckles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feel these things. <laughs> Well, at three and one, I still have two absolute princesses, and so they don't do anything 
um, wrong yet. I'm sure we're we're getting to that point. I'll, I'll tell you this morning, yesterday morning, I woke uh, Eloise up and I said, Dad made you chocolate coconut oatmeal. Aren't you excited? And she said, that's not what I dreamed about. I dreamed about cereal. Sorry. So we need to work on a sense of entitlement, I think. Um, <laughs> They're letting you off lucky. I usually get hit with, oh, French toast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like a commitment there. Yeah. <laughs> all right well we'll get you out of here on uh on some of these questions so you, you talked about bees barbecue other favorite places to go uh when you're in town i like sup dogs of course i mean that wasn't a thing um when i was in college and the shrimp tacos at chili's oh, chili's good grief chico's uh shrimp tacos at chico's it can't be, I mean, Chico's is a staple. Um, it was, I have no long, I have no idea how long Chico's has been there, but Chico's was there when I was a kid. Um, so I, I love Chico's. Uh, favorite quote you shared with it. I wrote down the Churchill quote. Yeah, I mean, I love the, if you don't do more than what you're paid to do, you'll never get paid more for what you do. I have a, I have, it's actually sitting on my laptop right now. Um, I have a it, just GO and next to it is my hourly rate. And it's it stands for go and it stands for golden opportunity. And I try to ask myself on a regular basis, you know, if I was paying somebody this number per hour, would I be happy with my performance? Because mm -hmm. again, I mean, it's human nature, you know, you you mismanage time, you might loaf a little bit, and it's just a continual reminder and motivator to me that this community is investing X in me per hour um, to perform, to deliver. I mean, there's people, there's somebody right now in Spartanburg County that doesn't have a job and doesn't have an economic opportunity. And if we bring company ABC to town, they will. I mean, that matters. Actually, I like that, I love that. I, uh, as, as a big sports fan, I've often said, you know, you watch sports center on the highlights, uh, in the evenings. And I've often said, what if my highlights or, or my day was televised, uh, and that you showed the highlights of my day and some anchor was talking over your performance today, would you be proud of that? So the similar kind of mindset, what if, you know, if, if everybody could see what you were doing, is this the the effort and the product that you want to put out there for absolutely for yep love that uh favorite tool that you've been using and this could be an app a kitchen tool a garden tool any anything like that i don't well, first of all like a tool tool i don't use them i don't even know what a lot of them are called um like we get we put stuff together and jenny says hand me the the Allen wrench and I'll say well, what color is the handle um like I don't even know um but my phone I mean it, it is a uh, you talk about managing time I mean it but you know it is also a tool though it can save time too and so <clears throat> I don't know if I would call it my favorite I think in terms of recreation my favorite probably tool right now is I got a little Bose Bluetooth speaker and so we always like music playing at our house um, and right now it's, you know, Brenda Lee's rocking around the Christmas tree. It's that time of year, right? It's time. It's yep. appropriate now. Yep. Excellent. And then do you have a final word or challenge to alumni pirates or students out there? You know, um, it, it is just such a interesting, and I don't even know if that's the right word season of life when you're going through college. Um, I never I never really agree with people when they say, oh, this was the best time of my life. That's well, kind of sad. I mean, that was that, what, so what are the rest of the 50 years, you know, like, so it was a very good time of my life, but, you know, so is being a dad and, 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 and the joy that that has brought. So it is a season of life and it is a very fun and enlightening intellectually stimulating season of life too i mean what i would give you know two three hours a week just to sit in, in dr amon's class again unbelievable um so 
work like crazy, be tenacious, um, be persistent, but, but enjoy it too, because that four years, or for me, four and a half, goes quick, so quick. Um, and there are days that when I'm here, I'm, I sometimes, you know, deal with a challenge and I'm like, what I would give to be sitting, you know, in A.J. Fletcher right now, you know, listening to a, a, a lecture from Dr. Simon or, or someone else. So, you know, enjoy it. Um, and remember, um, college too is not just about what you learn, but it's about building social capital too. There's so many people that do not have social capital. I can tell you there is not a single role um, that I've been fortunate enough to get that I, that I got um, because I didn't know, I knew someone. I mean, every single one of them, I knew someone, I knew a collection of people that could vouch for me. That's so important. I mean, you can bury your head in the books all day long um, and you might have a 4.0 and you might have all this kind of, you know, educational academic accolades, but social capital can get you just as far, if not further. And quite honestly, some people come from backgrounds where when they started East Carolina, they have none, they have zero social capital. And so they have to build it organically. Um, some people were born on third base and have every single social capital available to them. And, you know, even if they tried to mess up, they'd be successful. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. Awesome. Well, Alan, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate your time and uh, you sharing your, your pirate story with us. I look forward to seeing and hearing more of the fantastic things you do out in the world. And full disclosure, Alan is a member of our uh, ECUAA board of directors. And so uh, enjoy being able to, to work and connect with you on a, a regular basis. So. Uh, thank you all for checking in. If you want to learn more about One Spartanburg, uh, the ECU Alumni Association Board, or about Alan and get in touch with him via LinkedIn, uh, we are placing those links in the chat uh, for your reference. Uh, we hope you'll continue to stay engaged with us both in the time of the coronavirus and well afterwards. Uh, to learn more about the Alumni Association and what we do, go to piratealumni.com. We have a ton of virtual resources out there for you during this time uh, and other items of interest as well. The association uh, functions based on gifts from our donors. So if you are inclined to do so, please consider a gift to the Alumni Association commensurate with your ability to give and your passion. They are all certainly very appreciated. Uh, keep an eye out on our social media outlets as we have Pirates Path events forthcoming bi-weekly for the remainder, very short remainder now of uh, 2020. Uh, you can join us again in two weeks, uh, December 17th, when we are joined by Kate Teal, uh, who's uh, president of the chamber here in uh, Pitt County, Greenville. So uh, I guess D December is chamber month for us. Yeah. Uh, so uh, again, thank you for, for jumping in and joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, and until then, we'll see you soon. Uh, be safe, healthy, and well, and go Pirates. Go Pirates. Thank you. Thank you all. Alan, thank you. Praying for you and your family, buddy. Thank you. Really appreciate that.